10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2... Drag racing fan, feel the power because it is Competition Plus Power Hour here on Tuesday night. The CompetitionPlus.com family of drag racing news you can find on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, probably even in some dark corner of some track off in the middle of nowhere. You can find news from CompetitionPlus.com, and it is the place where you can believe what you read on the Internet. And believe it or not, I actually have a co-host, and his name is Sam and Slam. How you doing, Sam? What's going on? What's going on, Lee? Another night of it. Um, the power hour. I mean, a little bit of shake up here, but I think we've, you know, whacked the throttle a couple of times and we got her straightened out, but I think we're going to have a good show. Uh, housekeeping, everybody. First things first, if you guys got any questions for the Pit Insider, myself, Bobby Bennett, or Lee, the Monday Morning Racer, you guys can email us, us, email us at powerhourcp at gmail.com. Please check us out on all the social medias, and we are on all your plaques podcast form so you guys check us out listen to us on the road if you're stuck at home or something maybe you're in texas uh just listen to us give us a listen give us a like and we will get you through whatever you're going through uh lee what do you got hot on the table for us tonight i mean jacob I will say this, if anybody could see what was happening before the show, it would be like the person on the top fueler coming to the staging lanes, still wrenching on something and changing a pulley. Like, look, it's time to go. And we were still trying to figure out what in the world is going to happen with the show tonight. Look, clue folks in about our, well, they were to be two guests. So clue, clue folks in, Sam. So anybody that knows, I was like super, super, super excited about this Uh, because I love radio racing. I love grudge racing. Don't get me wrong. I love all racing, but that's kind of where my heart is. But um, our first guest that we were going to have on, Donald Long, Duck X Promotions, uh, he is under the weather, not feeling good today, so he had to reschedule. And then our second guest, uh, Mr. Hey, hey, you better not talk about him because he can still hear that he might use that against you in one of his promotional things that he does, talking about lights out that's coming up, you know, and all the races that he throws. Um, And then our next guest, Alexis, she was supposed to come on with us tonight, but unfortunately she is going through what a lot of the racing community, a lot of the world is going through down there in Texas uh, with, you know, the no power, and then she had some water issues. So unfortunately... She cannot come on tonight either, but we care about you guys. We want to bring you guys our topics that we want to talk about and still bring you guys great quality guests. So, Lee, tell us who we have on tonight. Uh, Mr. Elon Warner, I believe that I'm saying his name correctly, but he is involved with PR media throughout the drag racing world and as our esteemed fearless leader, Bobby Bennett informed us before coming on to the show, he was with John Force Racing in the Castrol days as a PR rep. So, yeah, no telling what kind of stories we can get out of Elon tonight. Looking forward to that. Speaking of JFR, Mr. Slam and Sam, some big news, news. drop. Big, big, big news. news. Big news. Ooh. Big, big Finally, everybody out there in the drag racing world can shut up about if John Force is coming back in 2021. We're starting to, to, no, we're starting to controversy already, but will they shut up? And and we don't mean shut up. That's a bad term. Will they be quiet about this? And the only reason why I ask that is because, yes, it was mentioned that Britney's coming back. Yes, it was mentioned that John's coming back. But, there was one name that wasn't mentioned, and already we've started a lot of controversy of, well, why not? Why isn't this person coming back? How come? So, Lee, Lee, dive into it a little bit. Tell me what you think of the shot that was heard around the world today with the release of JFR Racing coming back. 
Right. So the JFR stable has been, well, four. Robert Height, John Force, Brittany Force, and Austin Proc. Austin Proc in his debut uh, year, able to win a race and uh, be competitive and was, you know, very similar to like Justin Ashley in his rookie year, known for being a great light cutter. Well, today there is a stable of three Robert Height, John Force, Brittany Force. So we're down a rail in John Force Racing. Let me say this, folks. I doubt this has anything to do with people liking each other. I doubt this has anything to do with people getting along or not getting along. This boils down to the nature of motorsports right now, period, across the board, and that is funding. And it is tough right now to find funding. There are a lot of people, they're picking up the phone, they're having meetings, and what is regularly coming back to the people having meetings is we're interested, but we're not willing to allocate funds right now. We want to get further down the road. I think you're going to see some deals made, but they're not going to be before the Gators. They're going to be even after Atlanta. They're going to be even after races on in to summer. Then you're going to start seeing some deals made. But right now, it's just tough. This is a matter of funding. It is not a matter of performance. It's not a matter of people liking each other. The money's just not there. And I can, I can attest, I'm trying to help two teams find that moolah out there, and it is tough right now for sure so definitely hate it for austin i think we will see him again and no. i imagine if he is not going to be in a top fueler this year he'll probably find a way to get in a midget at least and do some dirt track no. racing again and this is what i think about this right and and i want you to stay on camera here because here's here's our first debate even though he is not listed right now to race full time or race with the team as much as they're going to race. Who's to say, and, and I, I'm just going to say it like this. We all love John, right? Everyone says we can't see the sport without John. We did last year, even though it wasn't a full extravagant season, we saw what racing would look like without John and his crew. But now that, there may not be a position right now for Austin. I think this is a great example of maybe John saying, hey, maybe I've got maybe key words here. Maybe I've got a couple more years and then you're a part, you know, you can slide into that role. Give it time, people. Everyone. I've talked to about five people about this and they're like, oh, he's just doing this and then. And then this, how do you know what's in that man's mind? How do you know what the conversations have been over the last months and over the last year per se, right? We haven't seen him in a year. So don't make judgments. Wait for it to come out. Wait for the full story or the more interviews come out. And then let's make the, the decisions there. Am I wrong for thinking that way? Or are we just in a society today where it's, no, we're going to say this and this is what we think. Like, I mean... Who knows? Somebody else says something. They might get Frank Holly like I did. <laughs> yeah, you never know. Frank's out there lurking. There just might be some more Franks as well. Look. I'm telling you, that's a new shirt. I got Holly. I got Holly. Yes, right. Look, I man, got... this boils down to funding. Like right now, look, Terry McMillan, one of the best guys out there in the NHRA pits, had a long standing relationship with Emily Oil and had the, the, performance turning around toward an upward tick he is still uncertain about even making it to the gators it's a funding matter that's what it is it, and you have with the case of austin proc on his own apparently personal page facebook uh, he mentioned that he was released and i think that may be the best thing that john force racing actually did. A lot of people were looking at going, oh, why did they do that? Look, they're allowing him to search out other options. If he can find a ride, he can go hop in that ride. If he wants to go dirt, dirt track racing, if there happen to be some clause that you can't race there because you're with us, you know, sometimes teams work that out. If 
for example, NASCAR, they're like, oh, we don't want you getting them dirt cars. You might hurt yourself. Stay in NASCAR. Nonetheless, him being released, making, in essence, a free agent, that's good for him. May not be great for JFR, may not look the best, but it's good for Austin to at least have options out there in the NHRA drag racing world. Oh, for sure there is. And I mean, I think it's a great thing for John to give him the opportunity to seek something else, to be able to, like you said, to see those options. Um, and then and then other talking point. We want to definitely hear from you guys. We want to interact with you guys a lot more tonight and see what your thoughts and what your feelings are about this. I mean, yes, yes, we can say there's going to be band-aids and hiccups and everything like that. I see one comment that says people in stands um, with the COVID uh, limits. I mean, we, we understand what situation we're still in and from state to state, just like the big news of Arizona, um, you know, and, and the other racetracks, things getting pushed back. And we, we still have to roll with the punches of what 2021 going to throw to us. But as I've done the last couple of weeks, Lee, here it goes. Here's your countdown. 17 days until the door slammers. 17 days until the door slammers. That means 17 days until people are testing. I'm going to say 10 days until you start seeing the videos of the um, trucks and the trailers pulling out of the shop for the first time. I mean, we are close. We are close. 23 days into the Gator Nationals, guys. I mean, we're, we're right there. We're, we're right there. We're on the edge of 2021 race season coming full swing. So I'm, I'm super excited about that. Um, I just want to know, Lee, for you right now, looking at it, 17 days and 23 days. What are you getting most excited about at this point? Like, what is it that you're like, okay, you know what? This is what, this is what I'm most excited to see 2021 start off with. Well, honestly, Sam, I've got to go from a completely different direction of what I am excited about. Yes, I'm looking forward to the Door Slammer Nationals. I'm looking forward to the Gator Nationals. But I have got a role different than I ever had before as a fan or even with the Monday Morning Racer brand going to the track because I will be functioning, in essence, as a media agent, a PR rep for a couple of particular teams in the Nitro category. So I'm interested in hitting the Gator Nationals and making a big impact with my MMR brand for those teams that they come out on the other end, How no matter how far they went in the rounds, that people knew that those teams showed up and made the show and were participating. I want the end of the weekend for those teams to be – well, one of the best media weekends I've ever had. So I'm most excited about that. Now, to your particular question on the matter of the door slammers and, and Gator Nationals and testing coming up, I am most excited for Pro Stock. I love Pro Stock. With that being said, I do not think that Pro Stock is where it should be. Let me say that. There's things in Pro Stock I want to see that is not in the class right now, but... I am most excited for Pro Stock at the World Door Slammer Nationals and the storylines that can take place there. Several young guns coming back that kind of made debuts there. You've got Erica, who I think she's going to be the hungriest one there to go out and try to get that win. It's, I'm looking forward to Pro Stock. Clutch, shifting gears, hitting lights. I'm looking forward to that. No, I, I mean, I totally agree. And, and the reason why I ask is, like you said, we're, we're rapidly approaching this and, you know, and, and having conversations with someone that I talked to here earlier this week about a lot of the different rule changes that we've seen over uh, the course of this off season. And a lot of the things that I think, how do you say this politically correct? A lot of the things that the drivers are voicing their opinion are uh, on that now they're saying, you know what, we're going to be vocal about this. We're going to start showing our raw emotions. And that's one thing I think I was really excited to ask both of our uh, previous guests about is, you know, their raw emotions. Uh, a lot of people do remember Alexis when she said the F word twice on the, on the um, live broadcast and everybody was like, oh my gosh, how can you do that? If you think about uh, Duck, I mean, he says it how it is, and if you don't like it, he's going to call you out on it, but that's his style. So there's just a lot of things that have been changing over this season, and I'm excited more so than just to go racing, but also, like you said, being in a different role 
um, of what my last couple of years have looked like versus this year. So I, I think we're really, really um, in tune for things. And there's just a lot of topics that have been brought up here this week. For all you people that did not hear, unfortunately, Alexis is having problems tonight. And um, Duck Donald Long, he's having, uh, he's not feeling too well, so they're not on here. But still, everybody, don't forget that radio tire cars to the blankety blank blank front. That's how I'm going to leave that one. Uh, we definitely want to hear you guys' thoughts on the big news of JFR Racing. What do you guys have to say? I know there was one up there, Lee, that you definitely need to see if you haven't seen it already. It was a comment here by John. He said something about those glasses and it takes you to Mars or something. Hilarious right. does comment it make, there. Does it make Earth look like Mars? I think he's referring yes. to the gold <laughs> as in I'm like reflecting the radiation from the sun and it's not affecting my eyeballs or something of that hey, nature. Hey, man, you got you to gotta, you gotta take that. You know, every week you get kind of slammed on it. So when someone gives you a good comment, speaking of this, wait. So speaking of that, Lee, you and I have uh, been talking about these Slammies Awards here lately. And, you know, I gave you a couple, I got a couple, but I think there's kind of maybe a concept of two ideas that I sent you. Uh, do you by chance have the picture of those? I do. Let's bring up the first one. What do y'all think of that? We want to know from you guys in the comments, Lee and I are going to go back and forth and, you know, have this traveling trophy. We want to know which one you guys think represents the slammy just a little bit more, you know. I forget the total. The who, yeah, I'm who, winning. Who, who is this? Is this the Hulk? What is going on? No, that's that's actually Slam and Sam. You know, when I get mad. Oh, okay, like, ah. okay, 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 okay. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, folks, look. Uh, let us know in the comments section. Email us on that. Uh, before we get to Jeff Arin, there are a few comments that I want to bring up and go over rapid fire here so that uh, we can definitely include folks in. We're talking about door slammers. We're talking about the Gators. Andy Myers mentions, I think, one that should not be overlooked, and that is Funny Car Chaos. Funny Car Chaos, they're going to be kicking off their season really soon. It's going to be there in Enos at the Texas Motorplex. And yeah, it's like 64 funny cars right now. They've got an A field, a B field, a C field, a D field. They might go all the way to Z for all we know before it's all over and done with. And what I love That's what we is, need to see. That's what we need to see. We need that. Yeah, we, we need, need it. When was the last time 64, 68 funny cars showed up at one event? I can't remember. Maybe Jeff might be old enough to remember. I don't know. He can clue us in later. You know, <laughs> we see you, Jeff. What's we going on? <laughs> What's going on, Johnny? Johnny P's in the house. So, look. Funny car chaos. Put that on your radar for sure. Uh, let me let me bring up this comment from from. Uh, oops, sorry, Randy. Uh, Stan. So Stan, let me let me point out something. Uh, this is still Randy's comment. Sorry, Randy. Excuse me. Stan, let me point Those this out. Glasses you can't see. Well, th we are getting so many comments, which <laughs> is good. I can't click on it fast enough. He's asked. I think they should allow testing before each race, like the Gator this year, to get the cars dialed in before the race. I know that does sound great, but what that does is it just makes the multi-car teams that much stronger. And for a team like Leverage Racing, for a team like even Foley Racing, for the part-time teams, th which cannot go out there and put out those extra testing runs to uh, get up to par with the big budget teams, it would hurt hurt them tremendously and what i still love about drag racing even at the professional ranks is this that the underdog can still do something because you look at right now in nascar sometimes the underdog doesn't get to do much unless it's a short track or a restrictor plate race like we saw the daytona 500 f1 forget the underdog it's not happening whatsoever it can Hard still disagree. happen in drag racing i don't I understand the comment, hard disagree. I know. Because if we do this, and this is where Donald and I were probably going to butt heads a little bit. If we do this, 
then you're going to have people saying, well, it's just like those radio races. They get to test for two weeks before the race. Everyone knows the track conditions. We super glue the track a million fifty times. No, we don't need that. You get in there, you test maybe, you know, a couple of days. You get there Wednesday, you test Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, here we go. If you give these guys and girls and these crew chiefs the chance to dial everything in, just like you said, Lee, no. Uh Uh-uh. Shake it up, mix it up, let's roll. That's the way it is, and that's what you got. I I understand, yes, letting them test maybe a little longer. First first couple of races of the year, maybe. Uh, I think that's still pushing it. But if we let this go on way too long, no. No. Right, like like the the Gator test. The Gator test is really helping and catering to, like a Doug Foley, uh, like a Foley Lewis racing. They don't want to go to Palm Beach, have that extra trip, be out another week. They're able to go and do it get parked and do it at the Gators, boom, roll right into the weekend. Because the NHRA, at least, has rules that I believe it's you cannot test on a track before seven days of a national event. Jeff can definitely make sure we're right on that. Look, let's go to Jeff. One, no, we need to go no, to Jeff. Wait one more. Oh, great comment. You sure? Which one? Which one is it? Mike Ashley. I think oh. that is the only case oh. where we let someone test a little bit longer yeah. is you yeah. on yeah. Nitro Holly. Yes. I think that's yes. the only way we let someone test a little bit longer. That that's it. Because we would need it for sure. <laughs> <laughs> there there, you know, I mean, there's no telling what uh the safety safari might have to do after that run. <laughs> I don't up. have enough S D cards. To record all of the methods. That, that's right. So. That's right. That's right. That's right. Well, look, let's get Jeff on. Uh, he's been waiting in the wing. Let's get him on. Folks, check out competitionplus.com. Check out the apparel. There are t shirts that is, you know, more, there's nothing more American than Nitro, basically. Spectacular t shirts that you need as a drag racing fan. Check them out. Competition Plus Apparel. Get your CompetitionPlus.com apparel today. Whether it's our nitro-burning funny car design or the vibrant door slammer design, we have the swag to show you are always in the know. Get yourself a hat, too. And we know not everyone enjoys wearing a mask, but if you must wear one, at least wear a good-looking one. Check out the new CompetitionPlusApparel.com for the latest from the place where you have trusted for your news on the Internet for over two decades. Jeff, man, yeah, did you happen to participate in the last, you know, 64 funny car event, whatever that was? Yeah, it's way before my time. (laughs) (laughs) So, Jeff, what do you got for us? Anything to add to JFR or anything else from uh, inside the pit? Uh, You know, not not a whole bunch. I I was excited to see that uh, JFR did make the press announcement. Uh, Obviously, we've been talking about it on the show a little bit, and I kind of figured out they only had three cars that were going to be there. But, uh, you know, it sucks for Austin. He's a good driver, but he's young. And uh, I think I commented on his post today that, you know, the next ride's only going to make you stronger. So sometimes as a driver, you can get a little complacent. Not that he did, but uh, it's all part of the growing experience. The, the drivers kind of the uh, they used to call them the light bulbs right unscrew one screw another one in there but when you get a good guy like austin uh, you want to keep someone like that and i, I think it's future just starting so i think he's going to be doing okay after that so uh, not too bad there and heard you guys talking about testing a little bit so you know at one time they actually had test rules where you couldn't test at all i mean like period no matter who you were um and you're right you, know, you can't test at a national event on the same track up till a week before. So it's kind of good to see them doing it. It's been a long off season. There's been some teams like JFR that haven't run like, you know, in over a year, obviously. And just trying to find crew guys for them has been pretty tough. I think they picked up a couple of guys from Terry McMillan's crew, which, you know, sucks for Terry, but you know, everybody's got to work and make some money. So they're going to be out there and and just got to get everything working again. And, you know, you got to turn the cars around pretty fast. They need some practice of doing that. Um, I don't see any problem with, you know, preseason testing a little bit like they're doing right now. Uh, speaking of testing, there's going to be some testing in Bakersfield this weekend. So, you know, hopefully Lexus can make it out. I think Dell was talking about running her car there. Uh, Jason Rupert, Alex. I mean, there's quite a few people that are going to be testing in Bakersfield this weekend. The weather's a little nicer than uh, the, the ice everywhere else or the snow. So California is a good place to be for that. Um, 
but uh, you know, not not a whole bunch else. Uh, you guys were talking about funny car chaos, and I think after the Gators, which I'm going to go to, I've been helping Jim Dunn out for a little while here and there. I was at their shop yesterday, so I'm looking forward to being there. It's been a long time since we've been racing, and I think it's going to be a good time. Uh, hey, you, are you going to be on the grounds for us there, at Bakersfield, for that test? Going to take a camera? Going to you know get some more inside things for us? Yeah, you never know. I might be there. <laughs> all right, all right. Hey, Mike Ashley, a man who uh, you know knows about door slammers and nitro himself, he says, "Ask Jeff what the real deal is with Pomona." So, what's the scoop, man? You're not too far from what I understand. No, I live like a mile away from Pomona, so you know, if I was a betting man, I'd be like uh, 99 to one that it's not going to happen. Uh, they just canceled the uh, LA County Fair, which is in September, at, at the same at the Pomona Fairplex. So I'm not seeing that race happening in April at this time. Uh, but, you know, they, they've been talking about doing it in June or July. So I think basically you're going to start off at Gainesville. And then after Gainesville, you know, I think Vegas is, in, in my opinion, probably 50-50. It, it's probably leaning a little bit more like it's going to happen. But, you know, definitely the first race, Gainesville, and then Atlanta. But Atlanta is, you know, basically the end of April, beginning of, uh, beginning of May. So it's going to be a little bit of time off. At best, we're going to be the third week or second week in in, uh, in Vegas. So, hope Vegas happens. One of my favorite tracks. I, I kind of like that place, and so it's a good time to be had there. Vegas is a I'm cool coming track to see you. I'm coming to see you in Vegas. Yeah, I, I don't know what I'm oh, going to yeah. be doing there, but I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Jeff, uh, we got Stan here chiming in. He asked, "What happened to Lombardo Jr.? Any word?" Uh, that one I haven't heard. So, um, not that I don't follow it a whole bunch, but, uh, I know he was racing off, obviously alcohol, funny car, map a deal and everything. And I, I'm not a hundred percent. I can't really comment a whole bunch on that. I think he'd go for Rick Jackson at one time, but, um, I don't know what happened with his deal. If he's still out there, what's going to happen. I heard Rick Jackson was building nostalgia funny car, uh, but he's been building that for a couple of years and hasn't been out yet. So. Uh, when the nostalgia racing starts happening and hopefully sometime in the near future, uh, that's always a fun time to be had as well. All right, man. Look, Fred Spell Jr. chimes in. Jeff, you need to come to Funny Car Chaos and be my cook. <laughs> so Fred's a good buddy of mine, and he's also an awesome sponsor of Funny Car Chaos. And uh, I'm kind of working at that. Like, if I have a little bit of time off, I think I'm going to go down there, not really to drive anything, just to hang out because – like you guys are talking about, it's like a, a once in a lifetime event from the last long time. Lots of cars there, really cool series, all kinds of different cars, alcohol, nitro, different bodies. Uh, I think it's going to be a good time. Do I think there's going to be some logistic things there? Uh, probably because you end up having 64 cars there, like one qualifying session. You know, if you run every eight minutes or something, it's like three hours or whatever. So with, with no oil downs. So if you try and run two sessions on Friday night, I hope they move it up because you'd be racing it like, you know, Saturday morning, I think. Right, right. I, it's going to be interesting to see how they do it. I'm excited for that event. I hope I can make it out there. Look, tell us, clue us in, uh, what bit type of business or what is the business that Fred owns that he is supporting chaos with? So Fred does uh, concrete and asphalt paving, uh, and he does all the Whataburgers in Texas, you know, majority of them. So. And that is a lot. <laughs> yeah, that keeps him pretty busy for doing that kind of stuff. Uh, and, and Fred's a good guy. I've known him for a long time. Uh, when I first started my career in Nitro Funny Car, uh, Fred was around. He used to work on the car actually for Paul Smith. And he was uh, working for Gary Sharp. And my dog's making some noise. But he worked for Gary Sharp on Lori Head's team, uh, or Lori John's team with the head racing team. And he's just an all around really, really good guy. Uh, he loves the sport. And he's got a chance now to kind of uh, help it out a little bit. And he's kind of hooked up with these Funny Car Chaos guys. It, it's a great deal for a sponsor. You know, an HRA is not asking for like $200,000 to do the deal. So, you know, Funny Car Chaos makes a little bit more sense financially. And uh, they've done a little bit of work. He just repaved like a, a whole racetrack with some asphalt and the, the turnaround and the return road. So it's kind of like it's neat to see that the kind of B2B stuff that can happen in, in that deal. And I know Fred's really happy with it. I know Chris Graves is really happy that Fred's involved in it. And it's, uh, you know, just real racers helping out other racers and, and trying to support a series, which is really growing a lot. Hey, Jeff, got two questions that came in for you last minute here. The first one says, if you were the president of the NHRA, what would you do to fix the car count in the fuel classes? Well, you know, it's 
they're kind of doing more than I thought they were going to do this year because so far they're, they're paying like the 17, 18, 19, and 20 spot. And let's hope they get that many cars there. You know, in the past, if you didn't qualify, you got zero, you know, and, and then they came up with some money and like, it was pretty good money, like 7,500 bucks if you were like the 17 or 18 car. And, and that helped pay for a lot of logistic things like, you know, some fuel and hotel rooms and all that kind of stuff. So it really helped out a lot. And even though they reduced the purse a little bit, it's still going to help them out, you know, up to the 20 spot for most of the year. So I was pretty happy to see that. I think we're going to see a lot of more independent cars. You know, you have to remember the last few years, there's only been like 10 to 12 full time cars to go to every race. So if you didn't have the independents coming out, you're going to have like 10 or 12 car fields. So it's, it's kind of a neat deal for some of the smaller teams to come out there, like Elevent Racing you were talking about before, and almost be guaranteed a qualifying spot and a spot on a race day to go race. And that, that goes a long way to getting some sponsors, I think. All right. Awesome, awesome. And last question for you here. It said, um, this question was actually brought to my attention by a driver. I had to look at the email address a couple of times, but it says, Body changes redesign, or why don't we have body changes slash redesigns like other racing sanctioning bodies? Ooh. So basically, I think what they're asking is why don't we, as drag racing, why isn't it mandatory every two years or every three years like you see in other racing um, sanctioning bodies? I mean, that's a good question. But, you know, I still drive for Russo's, you know, and they have a Monte Carlo body, which is, hasn't been made in like, I don't know, forever, like probably the late 2000s or something like before 2010. But that was still a good body. That thing set, you know, held the record for speed and ET with Tony Pedregon for a long time. And I, I think if you start changing bodies out where you have to get a new one every, you know, say a four year deal or a three year deal or something, those bodies, you know, and most people don't know this, but if you buy a brand new body and get it mounted and tinned with the wing and all that stuff and get it painted with a wrap on it, it's like $70,000. It's a lot of money. So I, I don't think aerodynamically and maybe in the last 10 years, there's that much difference in them. There's maybe a little bit, but if the small teams had to go up there and try and buy these bodies, you know, which is a lot of money, I, I think you'd have less people, you know, working on it. And I don't think it's a big disadvantage to have, you know, an older style body on the car. Yeah. So yeah, no, I just thought so with the Russos, I think the issue is more that that, old, that older body is heavier than it being any less aerodynamic. Yeah, for sure. Like whenever you buy a used body from DSR, whoever you're going to buy it from, that body has usually been through a blow up or two and they've been refixed. And, you know, they might be 20, 30, 40 pounds heavier. Some of them, like the Russo body is a lot heavier just because it, you know, it was made back in the day. And it's probably like, I think our car is usually 100 pounds overweight, which is going to make a big difference. Does 30, 40 pounds make a difference on a nitro car? Probably not. You can make up for it in other ways. Uh, but, you know, you still have a template you have to go through. Even with the older Monte Carlo body, there's cer certain templates for how high the wing is, how wide the body is, the angle of the headers, the flares. So I don't think there's a huge, huge difference there. Like if you're trying to run, you know, 380 in a funny car, that, that newer body probably helps you out by a few hundreds. But it's not that much of a detriment to somebody else. Awesome. Awesome. I, I enjoy the, you know, questions that come in for you. Uh, so like always, as Lee usually asks, what is the cigar of choice for tonight? Oh, I think I had a uh, Cohiba so far tonight, not a Cuban one, but still Dominican Cohiba. So it's like pretty good. Can't complain. And I'm sure I'm going to be on for a second one here in a minute. We just ordered some <laughs> Greek food. just got here and uh, eating some Greek food, drinking some, uh, cold Coors Lights, and uh, having a cigar. Folks, look, After there is no week. ice. There is no ice where he is. He's got he's got the fire pit going. He's <laughs> underneath the palm trees, a starry night sky cigar, and Greek food now. Partying yeah. and living like a rock star. Do not <laughs> let this man fool you. Yeah. I'm surprised yeah. he's not listening to any ice cube or anything like that after, you know, Tobler on last week. Not going to lie. Wednesday morning was a good day for, you know, a little ice cube. So for sure Put down memory lane. <laughs> well, it, it's been a, it's been a pleasure again, dropping all the insider news. Um, maybe we'll see you in Florida. Who knows? You know, you might show up. So don't have too much Florida fun without sure. us. Yep. <laughs> oh, I, I think he intends to. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Jeff, thank you. All right, guys. Have a great show. Hey Lee, so, I saw this comment. Another comment that caught my eye. 
David said something about the um, we're not going to be able to use combustion engines anymore, so it's going to be the Energizer Nationals. No, absolutely not. Again, we are not going down this electric car road. I don't agree with it. Just well, what mad. he's getting at, don't what he's getting at, is that the new administration. I mean, look, you know, look, you haven't you when 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 the changing of the guard happens, it can bring things in flux. I mean, we no. already have things down the pipeline of taking data no. away from people who own tractors and tractor trailers and and now our cars. So no telling, no, no. telling. Well, no. let's let's hope we have nitro for many, many years to come. Then we'll have rolling. Can you imagine this? Now we're going to have rolling blackouts. Power surges. The car is going to be going down the track, and it's going to slow down. It's going to pick back up. No, absolutely not. Look, I don't agree. The only the only thing in motorsports as of right now, mainstream that I want green is burn all the ethanol you want as long as it's making the same power. That's cool with me. That's cool with me. Well, look, man, we need to bring on our guest. Uh, before we do, quickly inform everyone once again why it is just guest and what happened with our two other esteemed before we bring on Mr. Warner. Well, speaking of all the electric car stuff and everything we were talking about, uh, Miss Alexis is not with us tonight. She had some problems. She's down in Texas, so she had some problems um, with power and water stuff. So, unfortunately, she's not with us. And then the Tom Brady of promoters, and this goes out to the boss man, the Tom Brady of promoters, Donald Duck Long with Duck X Promotions and Lights Out that is happening here soon. Um, he's not with us. He is feeling ill under the weather, so we want him to get back to 100% so he feels better. So we got a good guest for you guys tonight, and this person has a lot of stories with working with JFR, so it's going to be a great show. Um, and you know, we, we are ready to rock and roll. We're going to bring on our guests. So yes, that's why they're not with us. We will reschedule them and bring them back on. So guys, don't worry. The Tom Brady of promoting drag racing duck will be back. And Alexis will be back on the show. Trust me. Don't, don't think we're going to forget about him. So Lee, without further ado, I'm going to let you take the reins. In the race for quality, there is no finish line. Jerry Bickle Race Cars is a one-stop chassis shop for drag racing performance parts and race components. For over 50 years, Jerry Bickle Race Cars has been an essential part of racers' plans for building world champion race cars. Our parts department is stocked with every part a racer might need. Log on to jerrybickle.com for more information. We build anything with doors. jerrybickle.com Mr. Warner, how you doing tonight? Well, don't be don't be so formal, and I'm already so intimidated <laughs> by the fact that I'm the, the sub for the Duck and Alexis. <laughs> the, the pressure the pressure is on, so I, I appreciate you guys having me on. I was glad I could, I could step in. I didn't. I know doing shows like this, you plan and you have guests, and then things go crazy. So I just didn't want to leave you guys hanging. So I appreciate you guys having me on. Just Man, call me Elon. Don't worry about Mr. Warner. That's that's my dad. So just roll with with uh, Elon or Big E. So no no worries. All right, Big E. Good. I like it. We can go with that. We can go with that. Keeping well, it look, West Coast last week. Clue clue everybody in on what you actually do because you know a lot of times we got some time to prep and we do some research oh, yeah. and so yeah clue folks in. So I currently work at Tony Faye Public Relations as the vice president of sports publicity. Uh, I do a lot of motorsports, primarily Coletta Motorsports, do all the PR for Doug and Sean Langdon and JR and their team. Also work with Justin Ashley and the Stripmasters.com, Auto Shocker, Top Field Dragster. Just signed Alexis DeJoria, who I had lined up to be on the show. But as you guys mentioned, Texas has been just decimated with snow and ice. So excited to be, this will be the first time I'm working with her this year. And kind of cut my teeth working at the Motorplex in the early 90s and spent uh, about 15 seasons with John Force Racing as the main PR person, which 15 seasons and four years really aged me like 45 years. 
Yeah, and I mean, so you working with – first, we're just going to start with the JFR deal. Um, you working with him, so you know all the inside, the backstories, the funny moments, the stuff that has never yeah. been told. I mean, how cool is that to know the history of this, this legend in our sport? It is I, – I tell my kids all the time because you, you make sacrifices in this business, uh, time away from your family, um, stress, but – there are opportunities to work with someone that is the very best at what they do, whether it's um, Tom Brady or Tiger Woods or, you know, Bill Gates or Mark Cuban, but John Force is the best drag racer ever, hands down. And to get to know him and to get to spend time with him and see how he operates. Um, there was not a minute that I spent with him from 2006 until almost you know, a couple years ago that he was not fully concentrating on how to be a better drag racer. And that um, it's made him a little nuts. It makes other people a little nuts, but it is, um, I'll, I'll tell you how I first started working for him is I would just doing some contract work. Dave Dinsmore was his main PR person um, in 2006. And I just started doing some contract work. Did that the whole year. I was working a full-time job, flying to races on the weekend, flying back. And in the fall of 2007, we were at the Motorplex. I live in the Dallas area. And Force is like, I want you to come work for me full-time. And this is during the fall nationals. And it's right before his run with Kenny Bernstein. We're talking and he's like, hey, I got a contract for you. We'll sign this contract right after this run. And I'm sitting in the press room with Dave sitting to my left. Force and Bernstein go down the track and we all – know what happened and the first words out of my mouth i turned to dinsmore and i say man i don't think i've signed on my contract with force today man man talk about a gut punch you yeah. think you the, like the greatest opportunity of your life and it's like ah the man just went out and died on me oh it was so it was so crazy because we didn't know what happened i wound up going to the hospital with his family um they're obviously you know he did so many surgeries I actually, the Associated Press called the hospital to get a comment on his condition. And the nurses came and found me, and I talked to the Associated Press guy. And now I realized I had another job. I was working for Beckett Publications as their director of communications and just kind of moonlighting with force. So there was never, you know, I wasn't breaking any rules, but still, your side hustle should really never overlap with your main gig. And I'm talking to the guy from the Associated Press, and he wraps me and he goes, okay. Can I get your name and your affiliation with the team? And for a split second, I thought about just saying I was Dave Dinsmore and just letting it go at that. But then I was like, no, I'm Elon Warner, and I guess you could just say I'm team spokesperson. And they're like, okay, fine. I hang up the phone, and then I call my boss. I'm like, hey, I just happened to be at the Motorplex for the race. Force had this big accident. I knew him. I came to the hospital. So there might be – I might be mentioned in an AP story tomorrow um, – but we'll just have to see the next day story was everywhere. And I was just quoted all through it. John force racing team spokesperson. And my boss was just like, what is going on? I, said, well, and I just was having to be down there helping them out and all that stuff. And two months later, force called me on a new year's day and asked me to come work for him full time. So I went back and gave my notice and started working for him full time in the 2008 season. But it was, I was at, I was with him every day in the hospital while he was rehabbing, and I mean he put his heart and soul into it. And I was I was there when the doctors came in and kind of gave him his prognosis: he had broken legs, hands all bandaged up. And the doctors said, you know, Mr. Force, you know, a good prognosis for you would be able to walk with a cane. And Force just started dog cussing this guy and said, "I want a new doctor. I'm going to be back in the race car by Virginia, which was two weeks away." And he said, I, you got to get another doctor in here because I'm not walking with, I'm going to be back in my race car in two weeks. And Dinsey and I were like, I don't, I don't know. We probably got fired more times in that month while he was in the hospital. Cause we would come in and say, Hey, here's a press release. You might want to write that you're probably not going to be in Virginia. And he just, he questioned our loyalty every day, but he just fought and fought and fought to get better and uh, just battle through. And I, you know, I was there when he, uh, when Robert won the championship in 2009, when Force came back 
in 2010 was just a magical sports day for me. Um, and then I was there in 2013 when he won his last championship um, in Vegas. So, so lucky to be be around that team and him and his family and watching Courtney and Brittany and Ashley grow up um, has been pretty, pretty amazing. So, Sam, let me get this one in. Uh, from Stan, and this one, this one is great. So, so many people have seen the Dale Jr. download and his most popular episode with John Force on it. Did John get into any trouble with his sponsor talking about Pornhub on the Earnhardt podcast? So, were you there during that time, and do you have to answer any phone calls? That that was actually during. Luckily, during a break when I wasn't working full time with the team. I was, however, around when I talked John into doing the body issue for ESPN.com and then also was involved in having Courtney be in the body issue where she was actually on the cover of the magazine. And we got into, we got more sideways on that than, and I'm sure some people brought it up, but again, that was the highest rated Dale Jr. podcast, I think, ever. So Force will always fall back on some publicity is better than no publicity. He's a, he's the king of win or be spectacular. So I'm sure he probably doesn't even know what Pornhub is. I'm sure he probably just heard about it and, you know, didn't even know what he was saying half the time. <laughs> yeah, that, oh, that it, it became it became the John Force download that day. It certainly oh, yeah, is. It was, <laughs> Force can – I remember it, at the Daytona 500 one time, he, w- he was down there for a sponsor – he went on the set, and it, uh, there was a host, and there, Jimmy Johnson was also on the show. And Force got on there and was just Force, was just talking and telling stories and slapping guys on the back. And he, it was just full throttle all over the place. The segment ends. They're all sitting there. They take off their headsets. Jimmy Johnson takes off his headset and turns to somebody and says, I'm never doing TV with this guy again. He was, like, shell-shocked. Like, he didn't know what had happened, and it was just – that's just force. He will come in and take over any environment. He can read a room better than anybody I know, whether it's a meet and a greet in a suite or a sales convention for a sponsor in front of 3,000 people. So so I got to ask, and Lee and I got sent this video by the boss man, Bobby Bennett, of the most, I, it's the best, meltdown by a drag racer I've ever seen or by anyone in sports. It's back in 18, I mean, in 1989, um, force just goes crazy. He's like, no, we're taking this car and we're driving it back straight up the track. Like, I don't care. And because they said he hit the wall. Yes. And he lost, he, he lost. Yes. At the motorplex. So is that typical John just, he's so involved in it. So love and so passionate that, he, like nothing else matters other than what just happened right then. Yes. Yes. I have seen him just go so over the top on something, whether he thinks he's right about what should happen for a sponsor or an autograph session. If it's on the track, um, I, I actually wrote about this, you know, a couple times uh, for people of just, he will get so focused on something that he just loses sight of, everything else that's going on. And you find yourself getting sucked into that because you don't even realize what's going on. I would call it hurricane force that imagine you're in the middle of the ocean in the middle of a hurricane and you're on a life raft. So as long as you hold on to the life raft, you're going to be okay. No matter what. And force is just going right and right and right and right. You keep holding on to that life raft. Eventually the hurricane will pass and you'll be okay. Now you may have swallowed some salt water and you may just be disoriented, but you're going to be okay. You just have to hold on to that life raft. And that I saw that video, and that is vintage force of – and he knew – and the thing is, he was right. And that's the most dangerous force is <laughs> when he's up on a tire and he's right because he will never, ever let it go. So, Big E, let's bring this up to modern day. Yes. How challenging – has this extended in COVID off season been? So, you know, I've, I've had a small taste of it in trying to help some teams with social media and staying right. relevant and things of that nature, but you've got a much larger scope brand and who you're dealing with. So how challenging has this off season been compared to others? Let's actually 
go back to the, the spring of 2020 when COVID started and stopped the racing season for however many months and almost it all blurs together. Um, when you're working with teams that have sponsors that are expecting to see drivers and meet drivers, one of the smartest things Coletta Motorsports did with their sponsor DHL is they had originally planned on doing safety meetings in person at DHL hubs in nine different cities. Well, we did Phoenix and it went great. And then COVID hit and we had to quit going to races. So at Coletta, we pivoted and said, you know what? We can't be in person. We were one of the first people that started doing Zoom meetings with DHL um, hubs. So instead of just doing nine in-person meetings, we did over 30 Zoom meetings where Q&As with JR and Sean and 30 or 40 DHL van or couriers, drivers, and we would do interactions that way. So we actually did more in the downtime than we would have if we would have been racing. It was different. Uh, we did a lot of things, but this this off season now being longer has been a struggle because it is all about content. And now you want to have, you know, race cars and shop footage and driver autograph sessions. It has been really challenging, but you just have to be creative with social media interaction, Zoom calls, um, you know, anything you can do to stay connected to your sponsors and to your fans. And luckily, um, the teams that I'm lucky enough to work with, you know, at Coletta, their drivers understand social media, understand talking to sponsors. Justin Ashley's probably one of the best in the business of doing social media and engaging with his sponsors. Alexis has a great uh, following and engages with people. So that makes it really easy when the drivers are bought into it and they have sponsors that understand um, we're all in the same boat. We're all trying to do the same thing and talk about our products and our brands and the excitement of NHRA. And we all understand that the, the sanctioning bodies doing everything they can to just make sure we can get as many races in and as safe an environment as possible. So, Sam, see, talk, we, we are an asset out here in this long yes. off season talking about drag racing. For sure. <laughs> For sure. And that's what I tell people all the time. Some drivers will push back and say, you know, how, how, how popular is this radio show? How many people watch this podcast? And I'm like, you know, some are bigger than others, but you have to support the people that are talking about the sport because no matter how many people there are listening or watching, I will always advocate for, for supporting the people that are promoting the sport and working with them and trying to get them drivers or sponsors or, you know, riders and things like that because you guys are helping keeping the sport going just talking about what's going on on the track, talking about funny car chaos, the motorplex, talking about sponsors, um, you know, giving people an opportunity to share their passion and talk about drag racing because it is important to get the word out and let people know that, you know, the race season is going to go on and will get better. And so I, I, my hat is off to you guys. And that's why I was, you know, when I, Alexis fell through, I was like, man, I can't get, leave these guys hanging because I know how hard it is to do shows like this and to make them entertaining. So I'm just, I'm just glad you guys are having me on. Well, man, we're glad to have no, you. And look, thank you for helping us. That means we can get a, 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 a pay raise now with Bobby Bennett. So uh, with being oh, so man. valuable. Yeah, yeah. Anything you do, cause you know, Bobby's just, I mean, he's a media mogul. I mean, let's look at all he's doing competition. Plus he's in the apparel business. Now I wear his masks all the time. Right. Right. I mean, he's, I, I'm trying to think, you know, it, it is he like the Rupert Murdoch of, you know, drag racing media now with Fox News, you know, and he's got all these tentacles and, you know, all this stuff. So, yeah, he's for sure you guys should get yeah. a race. Whatever yeah. it is, yeah. I fully advocate for you guys getting a race. I like that. I agree. I like that. Oh, yeah. Bobby's calling me right now. He's, he's saying, uh -oh. Tur turn off your computer immediately. You're fired. <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's another thing that's really cool about this is that, you are just, you know, you're the PR person, but a lot of people don't come to you and say, hey, they come to you to say, hey, can we talk to so-and-so? Hey, sure. can we do this? But for us, it gives us a chance to talk to someone that, you know, we strive to get to this level, right? We strive to be in your, in your shoes or 
anything like that. So it's good for other people to see the behind the scenes of it, right? The <laughs> that's yeah, a good one. Sorry. <laughs> we're not there. Just, yeah, we're done here. Just, the fans are coming just, in. Pull him off. Let him keep talking. That guy, he'll just keep talking. It doesn't matter. He doesn't need horses rubbed off on enough. He doesn't need an audience. He'll just keep talking. So. But no, it, it's cool to tell, like Lee and I talk about it all the time on our personal shows. We want to tell the stories that people are not telling. We want to show you guys out there that, hey, there's a lot that goes on to it. There's, like you said, studying, you know, who you're talking about or getting the information, asking the questions. But to have you tell the stories of these drivers that you work with, that you talk to on, you know, the day in and day out basis, I think it's awesome, you know, that you were like, hey, these fell through. I I got you. Like that yeah. just shows, you know, like Lee said, that we are we are doing our little bit. For sure. And and the thing for me is, um, I do not, you know, I'm a good talker. I'm a good storyteller. Don't get me wrong. I love um, being interviewed and stuff. But that's that's a role when I'm a PR guy for a team. That's not my role um, unless something you know terrible happens most of the time. Um, but to me, I get. You know, I'm a competitive person, so I, I look at PR as a competition. So if I'm getting my guys a story, that means someone else isn't getting a story. So we're getting out there, and they're talking about Toyota. That means a competitor manufacturer is not getting a story. That's good for us. Same deal with Mac Tools. That means another, you know, tool manufacturer is, you know, isn't getting a story. Um, and we want people to get stories, but you always want to promote your guys. So being able to be, um, you know, aggressive and find an opportunity – to you know talk about sponsors but then also not burn any bridges with media people um you know that's an important aspect of it so this will probably be one of maybe two or three interviews i do all all year um because it's just not kind of something i go out and um and seek to build my profile my job is to build you know my clients profiles sam we're special for sure. I feel the love. I feel the love. <laughs> hey, and in and, and Deep Junk Garage, he says, look, I'm advocating for large pay raises. I'm. Thank you. We're, we're, we're working something tonight. This is my favorite episode so far. Okay. <laughs> Everybody's got to be somebody. Everybody's yeah. got to be somebody. Definitely. So, uh, Elon, I'm going to bring up this comment from Stan. Sure. He, he makes this. He says, NHRA and teams should work with graphic designers for the cars. The car graphics are boring in this era. So talk to me about how that all works together, getting a car designed, and, uh, yeah, could they be a bit flashier? Yeah, I think, again, um, a lot of guys will say, that, you know, yes, these cars run on nitro, but they really run on dollars. Dollar bills, $10 bills, $100 bills. So I like the look of – like the Coletta cars, um, because they have, you know, they have DHL or Mac tools, but then they have a few primary sponsors. I never liked um, the force cars because, I mean, it's a good problem to have. You have a lot of sponsors, but they just kind of get cluttered up. I like the cleaner looking cars. My favorite cars of forces were always the ones that had flames on them. You know, anything like that. I love seeing um, some of these independent cars that come out, uh, you know, Mac attack, um, you know, teacher's pet, things like that, that uh, you just get more of a story with a car. But, you know, in, in the corporate world we're living in, you got to kind of put those decals on the car to um, keep everybody happy and get the eyeballs. Uh, but I like to see the specialty cars. And I wish more people had the opportunity to do, you know, camouflage cars or cars that had flames on them. Or uh, you had more of the marketing partnerships where you had a Frankenstein car or bionic man or, or whatever so I, I agree i would love to see you know graphics come back a little bit uh but it's just so tough trying to make a really cool looking car when you're also trying to keep your sponsors happy with their with their logos and messaging yeah there's definitely Speaking something of cars, missing. yeah but lee you and i talked about this i want to see the jolly rancher car come back sure i want you know I mean, I want, I want Bobby's throwback virtual contest to actually become a real thing, just like they do in NASCAR. What is it at Darlington when they run the, yes, the throwback yes. paint designs? Yep. You know, I, I, I would love to see 
a bounty, you know, like a true bounty hunter, yep. you know, car. I have I been advocating. Look, yeah, I've been advocating. Connie have on his drag show that Sean Langan drives. I would love for him to bring back the bounty hunter deal where he puts other drivers' names on the car and then just scratches them out throughout the year. Because to me, I just think that's cool. Now I get, hey, you don't want to, you know, you don't want to poke the tiger and all the stuff. But if you know, you don't want to poke the tiger. But if you're the great white shark, it doesn't really matter if you're poking the tiger. You know, and if you can back it up, then that's that's really cool. But yeah, the, the whole throwback deal and the other thing that I advocate that I'm trying to do more, try to talk. I work with the Motorplex a lot, uh, but trying to talk these tracks about you get a Wally for winning the race, which is great. But every race has the same Wally. Tracks should have their own signature trophy. Like when you were in Martinsville, you get a grandfather clock. You know, mm -hmm. we have some of that. You know, you win Sonoma, you get this really nice wine chalice. You win Dallas, you get a custom cowboy hat. Uh, Norwalk does this really cool ice cream scoop. Um, but every track to me should have a signature trophy because Forces won 151 races, and you go into a shop in Yorba Linda, and it basically looks like a Wally factory. Um, I was lucky enough uh, to go to Bobby Ray Hall's uh, shop in Chicago. He has this killer. He lives on one of those motor course um, ranches where like guys could have a house on a golf course. This is a road course and it has houses. So he has like this garage with a condo on top, but in his garage, he has like his Indy 500 car and then he has a wall of trophies and they're all different. You know, when he won the Molson 500, it's like a big bear and then there's all the trophies look different and it tells more of a story. Whereas, you know, you win, 20 NHRA races, the Wallys all look the same, and you just have to look at the plaque to see what they are. So I advocate for tracks to come up with a cool, it doesn't have to be expensive, it could just be something indicative of your track and give that to, uh, to the four winners. So it would make it very cool, I think. I have to agree. I, like I have to agree. Yeah, like, you know, Nashville guitar, you get the right. guitar. You know, when you win at New Hampshire, they give you the lobster and things of that right. nature. And like and, the the cobalt race they gave the guys like a huge yep. cobalt, you know. I'm a PR guy. I don't know what the tool is that has the wrench. Two. It was a big wrench. Just a huge wrench. I, you know, I think a crescent wrench that I don't think of. But they get, they get like a cobalt wrench that weighs like 80 pounds. You know, that would be really cool, yep. you know, to have. So, um, yeah, I, I would I like to see he, more stuff like that. Hey, I at least he in on. Texas, you get to ride the bull. Yeah, that's a cool thing. You do get <laughs> We get the bull, and um, that's the most chill bull I've ever, I've ever met. I, at first, I thought he was either blind, or deaf, or both, because he did not give a rip about top hill dragsters doing burnouts, people climbing on him. Billy Meyer got on top of him at the end of the race, and he no, but he could totally hear. He was just hanging out, man. It was it was awesome. Oliver's best mascot in sports. I think. So what do you think of having an all-star break weekend? Having the top, let's just say I'm going to say top five from each class and doing a, you, you drive a funny car. Now you're driving a pro stock or switch it up. Let, let's get some excitement, sell an all-star ticket or something. What do you think as a PR person of something like that? I would only love that a million percent. I love the Winston shootout when we had, the funny car ladder and the top fuel ladder and four speed Vandergriff going funny car top fuel dragsters head to head. I personally think at every four wide race after the final round, they should bring each of the four winners up and put them each in a lane and have a handicapped start. You put the top fuel dragster on the outside lane, the funny car on the other outside lane, a pro stock car and a pro stock motorcycle in the middle. You let that motorcycle go first in the pro stock car and then those top fuel dragsters and funny cars chase them down. I think that would be spectacular. You have them race for 25 grand, winner take all. I, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Like, you know, I've been advocating for a while that that the NHRA needs its throwback day. That throwback race revived Darlington, and now it's even yes. got another second standalone date when, right. you know, 20 years ago, they're like, oh, Darlington's going to be dead. It's going to be sure. done. 
and sure. it has completely revived it and it's one of the most popular if not the most popular race even over the all-star race in nascar man and the the rich history of the looks of drag cars oh my goodness i, th I, I mean, think the funny, the funny car chaos race coming up the motorplex at the end of march i think that's going to be a game-changing race for drag racing it'll be the largest funny car car count race since like 1973 you're gonna have so many unique looking cars i know you know jeff was just talking about coming back for it i know guys like chad head and del worsham and caps and Pat Galvin and all these old school guys are fired up to see all these cars. And yeah, it's it's probably going to be crazy. It's probably going to go until two o'clock in the morning. But that's what's fun about having sixty four or more funny cars. And I, I I'm really hopeful that they're people are going to see that and they're going to see the popularity of Mad Max and Jungle Jim and all these cars maybe. And then go like you know what I'm going to tell my sponsor, you know. I would like to just have one race as a specialty race. Let me make the car look like whatever I want it to look like as an homage to someone, as a throwback. And then they're still going to get a ton of ink. They're still going to get people talking about, oh, this is John Force. And it'll probably even give a sponsor more love because they're like, you know what? We had this guy run this specialty car and we gave him the space off of our car. You know, it'd be perfect. It'd be perfect for, you know, a track. Yeah, you know, Bristol. If we get back to Bristol this year, which I'm hopeful we might be able to do, someplace like that, or, you know, I don't know, you know, Seattle. It'd be great for Seattle going up there where Bill Donor did so many amazing races. Do that up there, and you know, call it the Donor Invitational. Or you know, I'm all for let's trick this thing up. Let's get the attention of a brand new audience that doesn't know anything about racing other than, man, I want to see cars go fast and guys get out and talk trash to each other and just have a good time. Man, I, I, I look, we're setting it up here on competition plus like usual, Sam. I mean, we got, we got it. We got it figured out. Hey, man, I, I'm, I'm not even going to, I'm out. sitting here. I'm sitting here thinking right now. I'm like, man, I, I had two pages of notes, right. For, for our original guest, but I'm sitting here thinking like, all these ideas from you and I, Lee, that we've been talking about on the phone, before the shows, after the shows, now we have someone that's in that position that's thinking the same thing we are. Yeah. Like, I mean, yes. it's, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, is this, I'm sitting here right now, like, is this really happening? Is he saying yeah. the same You're stuff? You're not crazy, Sam. You're not crazy. <laughs> I think I am. I get off the phone with Lee sometimes, and I'm like, he probably thinks I'm crazy. He thinks I'm losing yeah. my mind with some of these ideas. I, I pitched I pitched an idea when we had the tracks of shootout. This was my idea for the tracks of shootout. Was that your one through four, it was, you know, eight guys racing each other. My ideal was you did the ping pong balls to get the last person, and then you let the number one qualifier pick who they wanted to race in the first round on that stage. You had all all eight drivers up there and the number one guy got to pick i want to race that guy number two so you're person, saying traditional call out yes straight up call out oh and then the other idea that i had and these are all ideas that i talked to people about the other idea was as far as qualifying order even before that you guys remember when they had the uh bush clash and they would actually choose starting positions by putting like a case of bush beer into a cooler and the drivers would reach into the cooler and pull a beer out. And on the bottom of the can was their starting position. Yep. I said for Traxxas, we should have eight Traxxas cars lined up and then eight controllers and the number one guy and all the cars would be numbered, but the controllers all look the same. You walked up there, grabbed the controller and hit the controller and whatever car moved, that was your starting position. And completely randomized. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, yeah. Because why should it matter when you win your Don't race? tell any more of your secrets tonight. Just don't. I, I'm, oh, man. Just don't tell them all tonight. I mean, I don't think in the countdown, anyone should race non-countdown cars. If you're in the countdown, you should only race countdown racers. Load them up all on one side of the ladder. Yeah. No, I, somebody will get butt hurt way too quick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to say it. Somebody's going to, someone instantly 
As soon as that, they're like, hey, we're doing that this race. Someone's like, yeah, I'm not showing up. Well, you're, I mean, you're I right. <laughs> and again, this is just, you know, me talking. I, I'm a fan of the countdown. I like the playoff scenario. I understand, you know, it, it, it messes with the fabric of the sport because we're not the NFL. We're not Major League Baseball. We're not, don't have this big TV deal and drivers need to be in championship contention. But the gut ache of going into Pomona, knowing you have to win three rounds, knowing you have to win two rounds, being in control of your own destiny, that to me is what's made the sport so great in the last decade um, versus when Force or Schumacher or you know Raymond Beetle were, were clinching championships right after Indy. And then the last three or four races didn't mean anything for everybody. Right, right. Now, now with that, though, you said something right there that really clicks with me. You said we're not the NFL, we're not Major League Baseball, we're not basketball. But if we show more of the drivers, if we let the drivers say how they truly feel, like Steve Torrance when he was on the top end and was pissed off, John Force when he's pissed off, you know, Alexa, when she's pissed off, Leah, when they're pissed off and they give that raw emotion, instead of turning the camera and saying, oh, and back to the top end or back to the, you know, uh, starting line. Why don't we showcase a lot more of that in, you know, what these drivers really feel? Because that's what's going to draw more people to the sport. Yes, the money is a lot more than you and I can spend, right? Yes, you know, they... They're in a different playing field when it comes to racing a car. But showing true emotion, I think, will drive a lot more people back in and saying, you know what, even though they're in a different playing field, they still care about what's going on at the starting line. They still care when their car blows up or is in shred. That, I mean, I don't know. That's just my opinion. Allow me to retort if I can steal the words from Samuel Jackson from the American classic Pulp Fiction. I agree that the, the passion is important, but to me, it unfortunately comes back to the all American dollar. You got to pay these guys more money to win races because Winston cup took off NASCAR took off when they gave Bill Elliott a million dollars for winning the, the noble shootout. And people were like, they gave this guy a million dollars for driving a stock car. You don't see a lot of emotion in golf, but those guys are still making millions of dollars. And I don't think people become fans of the NFL because they see, um, you know, does Des Bryant throwing up the X or, you know, guys, you know, they people appreciate the sport because of the skill that is involved in it. And I think we need to do a better job of promoting the skill that it takes to be a drag racer. That yes, our our sport may only take three and a half, four seconds to do, but look at the eighteen things that happen in that three and a half seconds. It's like being able to. I asked Jack Clark when Jack Clark was driving a top field dragster, he was testing at the Motorplex. I don't know if you guys remember uh, Major League Baseball player Jack Clark. He raced top field for a while with Taco Bell sponsorship, and I point blank asked him, "What is harder to do, to hit a home run or to make a perfect?" run in a top field dragster and he said it is absolutely no contest racing a top field dragster takes so much more concentration so many more things have to go right to make a perfect run in a top field dragster versus hitting a home run and that to me sold me on drag racing we need to tell stories like that about the skill that's involved and we need to capture the kids that are in the junior drag racing league and their friends and get them involved in the sport coming out to the races. Like, I don't think, I don't think any drag racing ticket right now for any race should be more than $40 a day. And we just pack the place with $40 people for regular seats. And now you can have your champions club and your TEC and your super seats, but for regular tickets, $40 for a full day of entertainment should be the max. And I think you'll see a huge jump in popularity, accessibility, and fan interest. All right. 
Here, I think, is the big question. We have talked about all these ideas. and Please bring and, up the big questions. I, I feel like I'm, Sam, I'm walking into a bear trap right here. So, so – you, you've got uh, we we we've brought up the great ideas, you know, throwback, yes. uh, the 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 expedition exhibition races, uh, tweaking to the countdown, and uh, even focusing in on skill. What is the actual hurdle to some of these things happening? Because at a time, the NHRA had these things. Now they do not have these things, even though fans and even drivers are clamoring for them. So. What is the hurdle? Is it leadership? Is it a board? Is it the so sanctioning body? Is it sponsors? A little bit of everything. I think it's a little yeah. bit of everything. I've never been more excited about the leadership at NHRA as I am right now. I think Glenn Cromwell is a great president for the series. I think uh, their marketing department, guys like Evan Jonah, who don't even know who that guy is. Most people don't. But he's the guy that's coming up with ideas and making kind of the Friday night shows better. He's trying to do everything he can to make it more entertaining, uh, to give fans more value in that marketing team. Um, I think their PR department is unfortunately very understaffed compared to other sports. And it really just comes down to um, finding sponsors that are willing to make an investment in the sport for the long haul that's just someone you need a for lack of a better term you know and, and what do they call those angel investors um could it be marcus limonis maybe i don't know but we need to find um you know guys that really honestly johnny gray bruton smith uh, you know some venture capitalist that just thinks race cars are cool and wants to invest in the sport because they see whether it's a computer application or an entertainment application or they just have so much screw you money it just doesn't matter um but that's that's i think the nhra wants to make the sport better the drivers want to make the sport better but unfortunately it just comes down to the planets aligning to give us that opportunity to really show Put our best foot forward and i don't know how that's going to happen yeah even one comment says put dash cams in the cars like you know nascar does and i think there's a, quite a few drivers that actually do have a gopro yeah. in there that where you can see yeah. you know if you watch the um you watch it back on tv but yeah i've, I've got to ask this question and this is probably geared towards you know someone like lee or i what would you tell anyone in in the industry of drag racing or any kind of racing, you know, as a PR person, you're doing what you're doing. What would you tell an up and coming PR person? Oh, uh, let me tell you, I would just say you have to love what you do and just do it with and, and introduce yourself to as many people as possible in the sport. It sounds like a cliche, but I didn't know anything about drag racing until 1993 when I started working at the Motorplex. I'd never seen a drag race. I'd been working for the Dallas Mavericks in their PR department. And a mutual friend said a racetrack was looking for a PR guy. And I just went down there and interviewed with Billy. I didn't even know he was a former drag racer. I thought every racetrack looked like the Motorplex. Um, but I just love doing PR and I just talked to people all the time. And I still talk to people. If you're interested in, um, learning about drag racing, find your local track and just say, Hey, can I volunteer? Can I work the water box? Can I work, um, handing, handing out timing slips. And then if they have a big event, if they have a Lucas oil race or a camping world national event, you want to be at that race and just talk to people. Hey, I'm interested in doing this. I'm interested in getting better at this. Um, their opportunities are out there. There's not a lot of them, but you can, I mean, doing what you guys are doing, starting your own podcast. I mean, that's, if, if that's one thing I could would tell someone, I would love to find more people writing about drag racing. If you like drag racing, please start a NHRA camping world blog about top fuel dragsters, about funny cars, about pro stock, 
because if you'll continually write about it and kind of promote it, there are people out there like me that will bring you content because we want avenues to promote our sport. And if you become known as a good drag racing writer, you can get a job at the, at the athletic, you can get a job with Fox, you can get a job at national dragster. But if you just put the time in and really work at it and try to get better, you know, Bobby Bennett's a great example. Competition Plus didn't start out with half a million unique visitors a month. It started out with probably a thousand, two thousand. And people told Bobby he was crazy, but he had the passion for it and he wanted to make it better and he liked racing. So he put the time in and made it as good as he can be. And there's never been, we're in the golden age of media and public relations right now because there's so many avenues for someone to promote the sport or promote their work. WordPress, you can start start a blog tomorrow and go to races and write about races and take pictures. And within a matter of months, you could have 10,000 page views and you just build on that. So I say, go out there and just try stuff. And if you fail, just recalibrate and try again and just be honest and fair. And you'll be surprised how far that'll get you. Well, you know, Sam, he's right, because we even live in the world where a guy who wears big sunglasses, is overweight, and is a ginger can make it somewhere. Right. I mean, Dale Earnhardt Sr. called from the grave and said he needs his sunglasses back, by the way. <laughs> oh! Hey, you know what, everybody? Biggie, you get the Slammy Award for tonight after that. Oh, comment. he gets the Slammy. Yes, he to gets him. the Slammy. He gets it. He hey, gets it. speaking of that, did you see the two ideas that we have for the Slammy Award? I have not. So it's this. So yeah, there's there's that's one one, All right. and then that's the second one. I have that so trophy in my house. See, Lee, I have on it. you. Okay. <laughs> Do you need me to? You know, no, no photo, no proof. But I can get it within two seconds. Get it. I want to see it. What it looks like in person. Yeah, he's going to get it. That trophy. He's going to. He, we're going to see it. I guess I'm this has you, to be Lee, the slappy I, then. The dude. Like, what? How how does this happen, Lee? Like, honestly, the stuff that you and I talk about all the time is the same stuff yeah. that he's saying. Yeah. So we're, we're not crazy. So we're not that. Far, we're not. We're crazy. not that far off. Well, well, I mean, I think I am, but oh, look at that, look at that. dude, look at that, dude, Lee. All right. So, so what's is, the story behind yours? This is the. Uh, there's a couple families that we know. My son was a high school swimmer. And a bunch of swim families, we have a pick'em league for football. So this is the trophy for the uh, Mansfield Swim Team Dads League of Champions NFL Pick'em Trophy that my wife actually won last year. So it's a traveling trophy. All right, very cool. And my very my cool. kryptonite, everyone has their own kryptonite words. Mine is first annual. You cannot have a first annual anything. You can have an inaugural. Or you can have a first, but it can only become an annual if you have a second one. Right. So when you see anything that says first annual, just realize that I'm dying on the inside. So my buddy made the trophy, and it actually says Mansfield Swim Team Dad League of Champions first annual trophy. <laughs> just to drive me insane. <laughs> yes. And yes. I'll Lee, show I... you my other prized trophy that I have that I found. I got this at catholicshoppers.com. This is it, Jesus playing football. It's football Jesus. It's football Jesus. And on the, on the plaque, it says, Jesus is my coach. And I used to have this in my office. And I'm a huge Steelers fan, so I hate everything about the Cowboys. Uh, so I would watch uh, people would come in and be like, what's this trophy about? And I was like, well, what do you think it's about? And they're like, what well, looks like it's Jesus playing football. And I was like, well, no, yeah, this is Jesus. The football is eternal life, which he's handing off to this little kid. And the 21 is the devil, just like Dion, trying to, who tackles Jesus? Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. And you should see the looks yeah. on people's faces when I say that. Because <laughs> they're like, but, yeah, you can get trophies of Jesus doing anything. They, the one I should have gotten, they one of Jesus ice skating, figure skating. And it was sandals with just a blade underneath it. Wow. Wow. See, I totally didn't I, derail your show like that. Wow. No, no that's no. great. That's great. Well, yeah, Elon, we, 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 
go with the Hulkamania trophy. Okay. 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 That's what we're, that's, that's it. Vote. That's it. one vote. That's it. That's it. Elon, look, my last question for you. We've been hopping around it uh, since the beginning of the conversation and just in a few moments ago. What is it like working with the Billy Meyer? Man, it is, it was awesome because he, again, was a guy that lived and breathed drag racing. I mean, he was a funny car driver and he had the dream to build the motorplex. And he he survived probably racing in the most one of the most dangerous modern eras of funny car racing. I mean, there just wasn't the safety there. And he's a business genius. Like he can do math in his head like Rain Man. And it was amazing to work to work with him. And I remember one time we, we walked into the NHRA headquarters one time for track operators meeting and we're outside the Glendore office and he goes, man, he goes, I've walked into this building as high as a kite and I've walked into it lower than a snake's belly. And then he turns to me and goes, I wonder what today is going to be. And we walk right into the building for the meeting and I'm like, what is happening? Because he, again, passion and perseverance and you know, he has a vision and he just goes after it. And he's, it's great because he's he's passed that passion down to his daughter, uh, Christy Meyer Johnson, who's co-owners of the track with him. And she's really bringing some young energy into the operation. And it's been really great to get to know her and work with her and Andy Carter at the Motorplex. Um, you know, how they handled the fall nationals last year during COVID to the funny car chaos coming up. He's a promoter's promoter. We would book in stunt guys when I was there from Kite Man to, you know, Dynamite Lady to Benny the Bomb. If it made the show better, he was willing to invest in it. And that's what, what more can you ask for? Awesome. So looking forward to your 2021 season. Yes. What what all do you have in store? I mean, I know there's a lot that you're probably still doing and trying to you know, to get all hammered out here in the last couple of days. But what does 2021 look like for you? Man, I, I hope it looks like 20, at least 20 NHRA races. That's my number one goal. That's as we get as many races in as we can. Uh, I'm excited about eight Fox national broadcasts with an NFL um, leading into an NFL race. Um, but to me, it is about reconnecting with the fans. Um, Coletta Motorsports has got some really cool promotions coming up with DHL and Matt Tools. Um, I know Alexis is going to make um, an announcement here shortly about um, a new uh, sponsor on her car. Justin Ashley has announced, um, today announced the Daily Crave, which is a healthy snack alternative. And he's also got a deal with Rice Coffee. So you're going to see more consumer promotions at some races like Menards at Topeka. Um, so just seeing the continued growth of the sport. And quite honestly, um, I'm looking forward to having John Force Racing back at the track. But I'm also looking forward to seeing, you know, the continuation of some of the smaller teams or other teams that aren't John Force Racing getting their time in the sun. And I'm also super hopeful that guys like Terry McMillan can find a sponsor and um, keep racing in 2021. Well, Elon, look, thank you for helping us out tonight and doing for some sure. hitting. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. It has thoroughly uh, been insightful. It's been enjoyable. But uh, we got to pull the shoots. We're in the shutdown area, and we don't want to hit man. the fan, man. All right, man. I'll tell you, thank you guys very much. And I really appreciate you guys. Have a, have a great rest of the show. Thank and I'll you. All right, thank later. you. Yep. Man. man, that that was encouraging. That was good to hear. Dude. Glad to, to chat on all of that and hear that and to – to know that we there's figured other, out what the there's others. We figured we figured out what the slam is going to look like, though. You, that's you that's went, big news. You went there first. Hey, I'm I'm dude. There's so like Lee. You don't even understand. I have a page of notes that I written down to honestly say that we. What, what is wrong with you? You took off the glasses. Oh God! Please put those back on. You have a face for radio. Oh, I do. Love you. I buddy. do. <laughs> I do too. 
I'm still oh. showing my scars from getting hollied a couple weeks ago. Oh, he, not he going away. You good. He pummeled you good. Dude, not not going away. But no, I it's it's really encouraging, you know, with like you said, with all the mishaps. We whacked the throttle a couple of times, we shook the tires loose. In Q two, you know, we blew a blower belt and then we came back and we we were a mess coming into this. But we straightened it out and now look at us. I mean, yep. we're we're coming around with the uh, We've got a raise out of it. We got a raise. Mm -hmm. Got a raise. I think that's a that's a win right there. We turned yeah. on the win light. So yeah, I mean, we're going into the semifinals right now before we close this show out, and I'm feeling really good. But it, it's it's funny to see that a, someone else is having the same mindset that we are. Someone else is still thinking outside of the box. Right. What can we do? That's right. always the question that we hear. What can we do? What will we do? So that, that, I mean, just so much. I appreciate the answer of we need like that angel investor, as he said, that the hurdle to some of these things is literally the bottom line. The, new, the numbers and the dots, uh, that's the issue. And I don't think, I don't think motorsports fans – that were there in the 70s, 80s, and early 90s, I don't think they realize how good it was to have R.J. Reynolds headlining so many different motorsports. I'm not saying smoking's great. I don't advocate for it. But as a title sponsor of so many bodies, it was a unique time, it seems like, we're seeing in motorsports. And now, just like this comment here from Stan, he says, does Alexis really need a sponsor? Yes. And, and I know where you're getting at when you say that. Does she really need a sponsor? No, she doesn't. We all know that. Does she, does she need one? No. But why can't she go out there and bring another person into the sport? If we continue to rely on what is already there, it's like a fish swimming in the fish tank. You know at one corner – there's that little tree over here. There's the rock that you can go under. We cannot do that. And that is the reason why we continue to talk is because we need to expand our sport. We want this sport to continue to grow. And the way to do that is to bring new people in. Right. Look, like Justin Ashley, you have a, you know, this this healthy crave. I can't, I, the, the name is already failing me, but you something that's an alternative in your diet. Like, why would they be interested in drag racing? Look, I don't I don't care why they would be. I'm glad they are. We need more of those type of products, those type of names coming into the sport. If you look at drag racing right now, it seems like it's the same old, same old year after year and everybody dipping into the same pool. We've got to get beyond oil and tool companies. Folks, did you hear me? We got to get beyond oil and tool companies. Somehow NASCAR has figured it out. Somehow IndyCar has figured it out. Drag racing has got to figure it out. And I think with what Justin Ashley's doing, even Alexis Jajoria, you're starting to see some brands come in that we've never seen before, and they could be very well be paving a way for a brand new Jolly Rancher stigma of a sponsor that was on everything at one time. Never even, know. Even like what Leah Pruitt's doing with the sparkling ice, you know, and, and the sparkling. CBD company she, that she's working with now. This is the thing, and I've heard you say it on your show, Monday Morning Racer. If you haven't already, please check that out every Thursday. Um, you have be between the slicks. But you did say it. If you grab, let's just say, I'm going to use this one since we're talking JFR, a Monster Energy, right? We all know that that's in the sport. But say, I'm going to say Alexis decides to bring in core water, right? When you go and grab yourself a core water, take a small picture and say hey i'm a fan of this or hey i support this or i saw this because of this racer give them right. on your social media it's so easy tag them into that because now Bingo. they know that they're your favorite drag racer or someone that you watch is hey it's had an impact on your life you've seen it so now you've gone out and tried it so right that's the only way we continue to grow and spread our wings and i like myself you know myself you Bobby, uh, Big E, and everyone else that we've had on the show, everyone continues to say, 
continue to talk about it and to continue to grow this sport. That's that's the Definitely. way we do it. Definitely. Yeah, man. Look, all of you out there watching, whoever may see this, if you are a fan of motorsports, and in particular, since we are talking about drag racing, if you love drag racing, find those sponsors, go purchase their stuff, and use your social media to good and say, hey, I enjoyed your product. I bought it because you sponsor drag racing. And yes, Red Solo Cup, you need to get in the game because you are the preferred cup after hours. <laughs> I, I can definitely entrust you with that, that that is the case. Red Solo Cup, I'm not quitting my day job anytime soon. And I fill Sam, you up. Sam, Let's have a party. Good, good oh, to be right. on the show with you tonight. Look, Thursday night between the slicks, 8 p.m. I have got the going bracket racing boys on. Uh, they have a YouTube channel and they're bracket racers. And I also have Will Smith and Mr. Harada himself from Harada you Motorsport. Have, the cool kids, mullet mafia on between the slicks. You have my uncle Will on your show? What? Not that you didn't Smith. invite me? Oh, no, okay, the one, okay, sorry. The, the one with the mullet. <laughs> One with the money. Hey, I'm just wondering, when am I ever going to get invited to that great show? You know, it's, it's really every every Thursday I'd sit back and say, you know, someday he's going to call me. Well, but I get it. I'm not important enough. You see me hey, on Tuesday, so that's hey, all yeah, you get you, there. You got your spot right here. You got your spot right here. And close this spot out, man. All right, everybody, that is Lee from the Monday Morning Racer. Please go and check all of his stuff out. I am Slamming Sam from Outlaw Performance and Matt Bro Motorsport. In the Groove Podcast, please check out my stuff on all your social medias. Give us all thumbs up, likes, and subscribe so you can see what we're doing. It's been another great episode of the Power Hour brought to you by Competition Plus. Don't forget, go and get your Competition Plus apparel. Who knows, if you see Lee and I out or if we see you wearing it, we may come up and stop and chit chat with you and go over uh, to the podcast and listen to it back if you missed anything. And that is in that is Power Hour um, on all your major platforms. If you got any questions for us, please email us at powerhourcp at gmail.com. And as always, you guys keep smashing that loud pedal, keep talking about drag racing, like and share this, and we will see you next week with some great, great guests. I'm Slamming Sam on behalf of Competition Plus with Bobby Bennett and the Monday Morning Racer, Lee, signing out. Peace.